This production is brought to you by the World History Encyclopedia and the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, but today... We are Sadly, Nick couldn't be here today. Hello viewers of the study of antiquity in the Middle Ages. You haven't seen me before on this channel, but I am Kelly, and I am here with an important message about Nick, the usual host of this channel. As you may have seen from his post on the community page a few weeks ago, Nick has been in hospital. This is due to an infection in his heart that caused him to become septic. The infection had abscessed his heart and had shredded his aortic and mitral valves. And after multiple open heart surgeries, pneumonia, aggressive treatment to the infection and severe pain, Nick is now intubated and on dialysis for his kidneys, fighting for his life. Hi, this is D.W. Draffen. You may recognize my voice as the narrator of many of Nick's videos. This whole channel, The Study of Antiquity in the Middle Ages, started with just this one guy, his collection of books, and an undying curiosity for the past. Now, 470 videos and 150,000 subscribers later, Nick made his dream come true, and it's many of our dreams as well. He gave us a home. He's interviewed the leading historians of the day and given them a forum to discuss their most interesting ideas. For all the above, thank you, Nick. Get well soon. Nick's passion is his YouTube channel and has been working so hard to continue growing his community. He has recently turned 30, bought a house with his wife Morgan, and they are expecting their second daughter. And so, World History Encyclopedia has set up a GoFundMe campaign to help Nick and his family through this incredibly difficult time. The hospital bill will likely be significant, and a discharge date is not even being discussed at this point. So they have no idea how long his hospital stay will ultimately be. All the while, Nick has no salary and is on unpaid sick leave. Every single cent raised from this fundraiser will go straight to him and his family to help him recover and return to what he loves doing, creating content for you guys. If you would like to donate and help Nick and his family, you can find the link to the GoFundMe campaign down below. Thank you so much for your donations of any size. Every little bit will help Nick and his family. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Zara from the YouTube channel History and Headlines. Today we know of a Scotland firmly entrenched in the broader United Kingdom of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and previously a major member of the British Empire. But of course, before 1707 when Scotland became part of the Kingdom of Great Britain, Scotland had been an independent kingdom since the 9th century. With recent rumblings in Scotland of a return to independent status, Increased interest in the origins of this great country and its people become relevant as modern scholars must know where you have been to determine where you are going. One bizarre theory of Scottish origins holds that ancient Egyptians or other North Africans were the original founders of Scotland, and this account dates back to at least 1320. Mainstream academic history finds the first known written record of Scotland made by a Greek sailor, Pythias, in 320 BC. By this time, Scotland, called Orcus by Pythias, had already transformed from a land of tiny bands of hunter-gatherers to a relatively stable civilization of farmers and the establishment of permanent settlements that developed into towns. But what of the more ancient history that preceded the Greek knowledge of Scotland? Scientists tell us ancient Scots first appeared around the end of the last ice age, as much as 14,000 years ago, as evidenced by tools made of flint. No Neanderthal or earlier proto-human presence in Scotland has been discovered, so the first Scots are believed to be our modern human ancestors. These Stone Age Homo sapiens are believed to have traveled to the island of Great Britain via a land bridge that connected Great Britain to the European continent during the last part or just after the last Ice Age. Obviously, this sort of academic allegation greatly precedes the advent of the Egyptian civilization, which is currently believed to have first developed around 3100 BC. Contrary to modern academic theories of the origins of humans in Scotland, Irish and Scottish mythology both claim that Skoda, 
the daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh, had traveled to Ireland to establish a settlement on the Emerald Isle, from which those people, called Scotty in these myths, in turn traveled to Scotland to establish the basis of the Scots people. Of course, people in the medieval period and prior did not have established archaeological methods and technical tools such as carbon dating, strata analysis, and an understanding of other methods of dating seemingly ancient fossils and artifacts. The human tendency to just make up an explanation for things unknown obviously included the topic of, where did the Scots people come from? An early record of the Scotta myth is found in the Book of Leinster, believed to have been completed around 1201 AD. An even earlier mention of the Scota story can be found in Historia Britonum, written in the 9th century AD and amended through the 12th century AD. Yet another document claiming such amazing origins of the Scottish people is the Declaration of Aroth, a letter sent by Scottish noblemen to Pope John XXII in an effort to elicit the support of the Pope for the cause of the independence of Scotland. By claiming an ethnic heritage different from that of the other British people, the Scots hoped to undermine the efforts of England to dominate Scotland. In the Declaration, the Scots noblemen cite the fact that Scots were descended from Israelites that had traveled from Egypt to Scotland in ancient times, even before the Exodus. While mythological accounts may be entertaining and fun, and at times used to instill a level of pride or claim to an ancient heritage, modern science often undermines the premise of these myths with hard archaeological and scientific evidence. Another modern analytical tool that debunks the Scots came from Egyptians myth is using DNA from modern Scottish people to determine their origins. The latest studies of Scottish DNA show a likelihood that Scots are descended from Irish Gaelic people that emigrated to Scotland, though the national DNA of Scotland is a rich mixture of many different sources. Interestingly, a 2012 study of the DNA of Scots people indicated that about 1% of the Scottish population can trace lineage back to North African sources, namely Berber or Tuareg tribesmen dating back over five millennia. Trace amounts of Scottish DNA also stem from far-flung origins, including Middle Eastern Saracen sources, although only in tiny portions. Exactly when DNA influences were inserted into the Scottish genetic pool are difficult to determine, as interaction with other populations, such as the Anglo-Saxons from southern Britain and the Norse Viking invaders, have not only left their mark, but also reflect the diverse genetic sources of those people. In any case, modern DNA analysis does not support the Israelites from Egypt claim. So, if the Scots are basically descended from Gaels, where did the Gaels come from? Certainly not ancient Egypt. The Gaels were themselves descended from Celtic people of northwestern Europe, from Bohemia to Belgium and France. After settling in Ireland, other Gaels traveled to Scotland around 2,000 years ago, providing a large part of modern Scottish DNA. The Irish and Scottish Gaels apparently share a common ancestor dating back to about 600 BC. Using modern investigative techniques such as archaeology and DNA analysis, Today's scientists find no substance to the claims of Egyptian origin of the Scots people. While decisively proving that an assertion is not so may be tricky, demanding some sort of proof of that allegation is a far easier method of undermining the core argument, in this case that Scots are descended from Egyptians or Egyptian Israelites. There just is no credible reason to believe such an assertion has any scientific merit, although it does make an interesting tale. As a question for my students and subscribers, have you ever visited Scotland? If so, please share your experience with us in the comment section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated.